conference I've ever been to. So I was well out of my comfort zone, actually. Um, when I was asked to be a delegate, as I've said in my report, um, I went along because I wanted to, to present the motion. I thought it was a good opportunity to get it out there. And when they said they weren't going to allow us to put our motion, I kind of made up my mind I wasn't going to go. I thought, well, yeah, if I'm not going to be given an opportunity to speak, I won't go. But um, Claire was behind the scenes saying, come on, we've got to go. You've got to, you know, put your best foot forward, get out there and, and let's try and get this back on the, the schedule. So a few of us set off, me, Sarah, Gabriel, a couple of other people. And as I've said in the, in the report, we went with the intention of trying to get it back on. Um, point of order. Hello. Yeah, point, raising a point of order, um, which we did. So I was invited up onto the, um, the platform to talk about the issue briefly. But actually, they, they just they weren't listening. It, that's what disappointed me. There was no response. It was like I was talking to a brick wall, actually. And they, they just, just dismissed me. Right, thanks very much, off you go. So uh, I went back and joined a few other people, predominantly young people, I will say, who approached me and they were very upset that the issue had been dismissed. So another young woman went onto the, to the platform, she said something, again it was dismissed and, and so we regrouped and decided well, actually we're going to go on there, we're going to disrupt the proceedings because um, we felt strongly about the issue. We, not only were we upset that they'd stopped us uh, putting forward the motion at very short notice with actually very unreasonable reasons why they'd done that, but also having got there and the time they'd devoted to telling us that we couldn't do it, we could have actually done the motion. So, as I say, we regrouped and everybody was very nervous. I have to say I was nervous about doing it. I didn't know really what to expect, whether I was going to be manhandled out of the conference and given a letter on the way out that said, you're no longer a member of the Labour Party. Um, but anyway, we, we went for it. This is what we had with us. And so I went down to the front with about 10 young people behind me and we explained that we weren't going anywhere until they reconsidered uh, putting it back on the agenda. And then suddenly there was like a sea of people coming towards us and joining us and we weren't going to move. So actually they had no choice but to say, right, we're going to put it to the floor, um, which they did, and almost overwhelmingly the support was for the motion to go back on the agenda. So they agreed for it to go on the next day and um, I'd have to pass over to somebody else to, to say, oh, Sarah, are you able to say what happened the next day? Um, could I, before you, you come up, I'd just like to say that some of you might think, well, what's the point of this? Why, why do you think it's necessary? Well, um, we actually had an incident involving somebody at the, the conference because these were on the Unite stall and um, a person took exception to that and there was quite an unpleasant scene. So I think it just goes to show these, these issues do need to be addressed and we have to make a very positive, um, a positive message to people that we will not tolerate discriminatory behaviour within the party, that we're a progressive party and we are inclusive. And we have to make that very clear because there are some people, even within the Labour Party, who are behaving really badly on social media. If you were to go onto Mum's Net, for example, you would see a hostile, toxic environment towards trans people. So um, please get behind this, speak up for trans people, and I'm going to leave it there. Thank you. Is this one? Yeah. Um, so just to explain a little bit more, for those of us who are in trade unions, it was amazing because as you know, standing orders never change their mind, and they certainly don't just agree because you saw on the conference floor that you can hear a motion, which was brilliant. I thought the recording of observations was the fact that the majority of people, apart from probably me and Denise at the front, were young, um, and the majority of people who didn't stall the front weren't young. I thought that was quite interesting. There's quite a generational divide. And it was the young people who were, we're not having this, we want to listen to, so that was really good. Um, 
And uh, there was a bit of debate about the fact, because there were other motions, there was one on rural bus services, there was one on health, there was one on education, and we were trying to explain, we're not trying to not have those motions here, we just want ours heard, and he did get heard. So on the Sunday, um, Denise wasn't there, we had a, a session on equality. Lloyd spoke, we had various different speakers, Lloyd was very good. Um, very funnily saying we've got the gayest parliament in uh, Europe, and it was great. But um, our motion got heard, loads of people, quite a few people spoke. In fact, I decided not to speak, because there were so many other people speaking, we didn't need, I mean, we didn't need to in a way, there were sort of particularly younger people, there's a young woman from Unite who seconded it, who was great, um, and it got voted, more or less, there was three people against, I think maybe, it was sort of like one abstention or something, but that was it, so it was brilliant. Um, and one of the reasons that they'd originally said that they could, we couldn't have it because they said it wasn't a, an issue for the South East. And the fact that we had somebody come and make this massive transphobic rant at the store kind of proved our point really, that it was, it was an issue for the South East. So I think we did really well. And I have to say, I had loads of people, and I'm sure everybody who was there did, have people coming up to us going, oh my God, conference has never been that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> So, but the, well, they, they did say that there was, a, there was a problem with the fact that regional conferences don't have like standing orders and they don't have, and they are looking into making them more, you know, better in the future so that we can actually work out who's making the decisions about whether we can have things heard and that. But I think we did really well and we certainly put our CLP on the map and um, we made the conference more interesting for everybody, I think, that's what people said.